So my goal was always 2300. As it turns out, that's kind of a technical level for the rally as well. And that's why gold's kind of run into kind of a little bit of resistance there. Now, see what happens next. We could wake up Monday. All of a sudden, China says, hey, we are a buyer of gold at $5,000 an ounce. And then all of a sudden, we go to $5,000 an ounce. More likely, at least given how it's always gone in the past, this to the moon stuff is not how it works. Okay, we're not going to 3000 by the 4th of July. You know, we're not going to $100 silver, you know, all these things that people have been banding about now that there's some interest in the metals again. You go up, you'll consolidate, you'll pull back, move up higher, come back down, move up higher. That's typically how it works. So silver now it's above 26, probably touch 28, pull back, and then we'll see if it can generate enough fresh momentum to blast through there. Silver prices have surged by nearly 10% over the past week alone, reaching levels unseen in three years. As of the latest data, silver is trading at $27.25 per ounce reflecting a notable 9.4% rise weekly. This surge brings silver to its highest price point since June 16, 2021. The Silver Institute has forecasted that demand for silver as an industrial and precious metal will remain strong throughout the year. Expectations are that silver supplies will continue to be in deficit for the fourth consecutive year in 2024, with demand reaching its second highest level on record. Analysts attribute silver's recent surge to its correlation with the rising prices of gold, which have surpassed $2,300 per ounce and are currently at an all-time high. The surge in gold prices has been propelled by expectations of interest rate cuts and increased purchases by central banks, particularly amidst geopolitical tensions in regions like the Middle East and Ukraine. One significant factor contributing to silver's current rally is a technical breakout above the key resistance level of $25 per ounce. However, silver's performance has not generated the same excitement as gold, despite this positive momentum. Legendary analyst Craig Hemke has noted that while gold experienced a significant breakout at the end of February, achieving new weekly highs and gaining momentum, silver has faced challenges in closing above $26 every week for over two years. Craig predicts that for silver to break out truly, it must surpass and close a week above the $28 mark. Such an achievement would position silver in the realm occupied by gold, signaling a definitive breakout and potentially attracting substantial investment. While closing above $26 is an important initial step, the ultimate goal remains to breach the $28 threshold and beyond, signaling a long-awaited resurgence in silver's market performance. We will present clips from Craig Hemke's interview with Liberty and Finance. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. And to me, it, it, again, it's pretty clear what silver needs to do. Uh, where gold, I just mentioned how gold had broken out um, at the end of February and every, wow, look at this, uh, all time, you know, new weekly highs and all that kind of stuff. And you had this big rush of, momentum and excitement the following week. Silver hasn't done nothing of the sort. In fact, silver hasn't even posted a weekly close above 26 for over two years. And so you got to at least get that done. And we may get that done this week, provided we make it through tomorrow, okay? But the top of gold's or silver's breakout is actually 28. It needs to break out and close a week above 28, before it starts moving into the territory that gold now occupies on a clear breakout. So um, it will probably close above 26. That's the first step. And then we'll probably bang around. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll just fly through 28 next week and woo, that'd be great. But once we get above 28, then silver starts getting a life of its own the way gold has for the last several weeks. Start getting a three handle in, on your silver again for the first time since, you know, whatever, 2012. And that's going to generate its own level of, of excitement. I'll remind everybody, and this is typically how it goes. Um, I would extend this answer for a second, Elijah. The only other time I'd seen a superfecta in gold was on December 31st of 2010. And it finished at all those, even an annual high. OK, on the, at the end. At, and then, so then what happened? Gold finished that year at 1420. And by early September, put in that old all time high of 1920. So what's that? A 20 some odd percent move. Right. Well, as while that was taking place, silver began 2011 at 18. 
and by everybody probably recalls by the 1st of May, was 48. So it can go fast. I mean, it's not unprecedented to see it happen. Um, but that, and again, this is important for people that think that, oh, I've already missed out. You know, silver's up $2 in the last four days or whatever it is. Silver's got to get above 28 and then pick up a three before you really start getting into the fireworks. And we're not there yet. Uh, anytime you get into a longer term or even just a shorter term bull market, you know, where you've got an extended run up in prices. Under this pricing scheme, where the price you're seeing is primarily derived through the trading of, you know, derivatives, futures contracts, you get this rush of speculative money that comes in and open interest expands and everybody's buying the contracts and the price goes up. Well, eventually you get to a point where all that buying gets exhausted, at least temporarily. And price begins to roll over. Some of the late comers go, hey, I'm going to ring the register on this. And they start selling those longs that they just bought the week before, or the day before, or whatever. And you get a correction and a pullback. And that money washes that back out. And then you stabilize, but the trend is still up. And then you charge forward again. That's just how it works. I mean, we call it the, you know, a wash and rinse cycle, if you will. Two steps forward, one step back. And I, I just can't imagine that it's not going to continue that way. I mean, we could wake up Monday, right? And all of a sudden China says, hey, we are a buyer of gold at $5,000 an ounce. And then all of a sudden we go to $5,000 an ounce. Um, more likely, at least given how it's always gone in the past, this to the moon stuff is not how it works. Okay. We're not going to 3000 by the 4th of July. You know, we're not going to a hundred dollars silver, you know, all these things that people have been banding about now that there's some interest in the metals again, you go up, you'll consolidate, you'll pull back, move up higher, come back down, move up higher. That's typically how it works. So silver now it's above 26, probably touch 28, kind of pull back. And then we'll see if it can generate enough fresh momentum to blast through there. In December, the Fed signaled its intention to cut its key interest rate by the equivalent of three quarter point cuts from the current range of 5.25 to 5.5%. Leading up to the Fed's March meeting, market expectations leaned towards further cuts as inflation slowed and growth moderated. In January, derivatives markets priced in as many as six or seven cuts. Craig highlights the US jobs report, particularly the unemployment rate, as a critical factor to watch. Fed Chair Powell has stressed the importance of this metric, indicating that a rise in unemployment could prompt proactive rate cuts to mitigate economic damage. Powell's emphasis on prioritizing employment over inflation concerns reflects the Fed's cautious monetary policy approach. Craig predicts market participants will closely analyze upcoming jobs reports, notably the one scheduled for April 5th and subsequent reports in May. Any indications of labor market weakness could reignite speculation about rate cuts, potentially bolstering the appeal of precious metals in the market. He asserts that the market's resilience in the face of rising yields and the Fed's focus on monitoring unemployment highlights the underlying strength in precious metals. Let's get back to the interview. I mean, when we wrapped up 2023, the Fed was talking about three rate cuts and the market was pricing in like seven or eight. So as we went into the first quarter, I thought, well, this is going to be kind of tough sledding as this kind of, you know, washes out some and comes back to earth. It's exactly what happened. Market's now anticipating two or three. The yield on the U.S. 10-year note's gone up by 35 or 40 basis points in the first quarter. Dollar index has rallied 3%. You would have thought the metals had gotten slaughtered. But gold was up 8% in the first quarter and silver was up 4 or 5 so the fact that we've been able to weather that and still rally, that's an interesting part of this equation, too. Now, I, I'll tell you one thing I, people should really watch, whether it's, uh, t as we record this, tomorrow, Friday, April the 5th, is the next jobs report in the U.S. Um, the first Friday of May will be the next jobs report after that. Powell made it very clear, and I, I mean, I heard him say it, in his press conference two weeks ago, after the uh, FOMC meeting, he stated that he will be watching the unemployment rate very closely because if he sees that ticking up, he will prompt the Fed to act preemptively to cut rates because he's afraid of acting too late. He said this again yesterday in his speech at Stanford. 
If we wait too long, the damage could be great, is what he usually says. So he's watching the unemployment rate really quick, really uh, closely. Last month, it ticked up from 3.7 to 3.9. It's all part of what really got gold going that, that first week of March. Powell then that following weekend, which is now two weeks ago, in an interview with Bloomberg, said the same thing. Inflation will have to take a back seat. If we start getting weakness in the labor market, we're going to put the inflation fight on hold and we're going to lower Fed funds to try to counter that. I mean, he's on the record saying this. So um, let's watch that unemployment rate, both this Friday and then again the first Friday in May, because um, come having come all the way down and maybe now the market is anticipating even less rate cuts than what the Fed is saying. If all of a sudden rate cuts for June or whatever are back on the table, um, that could have a positive impact on the precious metals. Gold prices have recently hit a historic high of $2,305 per ounce, marking a remarkable 28% increase within six months. Similarly, silver has breached the psychologically significant threshold of $27 per ounce for the first time in 2024. Analysts at GSC Commodity Intelligence view silver as a promising investment opportunity, noting its relative affordability compared to gold. Share your thoughts on Craig's prediction in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.